forged through blood and iron. Risen from the depths of crisis to the height of power, the German Confederation through countless wars has risen triumphant, dominant across the world stage. Feared and respected by nations across the world, the Confederation forges a new path forward, one set on freeing the subjugated peoples throughout the continent and the weakening of its historical rivals. Hello everybody and welcome back to Victoria 2, the GFM mod is the German Confederation. We are on our third part and maybe a final part, kind of depends on how this next 35, 36 years go. Um, we ended the last episode by actually vassalizing and forming Yugoslavia down here. I'm not sure they'll become a great power. Ideally, they won't. Um, we do have a few different great powers. Mexico is apparently a great power. I did not know that. did not even expect that. Um, well, welcome to the great power, uh, you know, club, Mexico. <laughs> um, but I think at least 550 score to get there. So I'm not entirely confident they'll be able to actually achieve that. But predominantly what our goal here is going to be is actually expanding into Russia re or releasing um, slash satelliting uh, Mr. Zapo Zapato Slavia. Um, down here. This is a vent uh, in mass politics. I guess we have to do that. And also get Scandinavia. In order to get Scandinavia, we need to free this. Now we have 17.53 infamy. We could try going for Scandinavia right now. Um, I don't think we have a truce. No, they are allied with just a few random people. Um, but we don't have any diplo points. So we're going to have to wait a little bit. It looks like there's some. Oh. I don't like that. I do not like that. Okay. Um, can we find our fleet? Our fleet is right here up in the North Sea. Way further away than I would like them to be. But we have actually a lot of torpedo boats that I think are no longer very useful to us. So I'm actually going to delete all these torpedo boats. So that we can focus on having other type of ships. Like cruisers, for example. Uh, so we're going to do that. Actually, I might even get rid of Ironclads. How does Ironclads fare against other classes of ships? So 626, 14, 13. They're actually not bad. Actually, well, they... No. No, they are. Just no monitors. No monitors, just cruisers, and battleships, and eventually those other ships. Do we even have cruisers? We do have cruisers, but no monitors, which is good for me. So we just want cruisers and battleships. So let's get some cruisers going. And I will go ahead and actually delete. Well, actually, should we? Should we? They have 46 ships, so I think, yes, we can. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and delete those ironclads. I don't think there's too many of them. 22 of them. That's fine. We'll delete them all. And replace them all with uh, our other type of ships. So what we're going to do is actually send these guys up here. Um to get ready to take out at least their navy and i need to wipe out these rebels i'm gonna we can't really walk through here can we they're not gonna let us all right let's go save our sicilian brethren somehow <laughs> uh go to gulf of venice we'll see what we can do so yon mine wants an alliance sure uh columbia wants an alliance oh gosh that was not where i wanted to go all right columbia you are chilling. Spain has a Panama Canal. Interesting. Uh, is going to ally with Colombia. No, it's not worth it. What am I even thinking? No, of course not. <laughs> they can't help me at all. Uh, there's no reason for us to have an alliance with them. Uh, Romania. We are attempting to sphere. Looks like they are in Finland. Actively in Finland. But we are actively over here in Romania. So I'm going to go to do is focus a little bit here. Because I don't think they're increasing. Yeah, that, that should be fine. Um, but yeah. Actually, we have, we have way too much money. Too much money, guys. Uh, we need to have less money. <laughs> <laughs> A lot less. Uh, I don't know, actually, I guess we could lower that a bit. 
we're working on a deficit. I don't want to get the whole we're a money hoarder again. Um, because that's happened last time. Turkey would ally with us, which I'm actually fine with. Um, more like that. Anyways, um, Turkey we will go ahead and ally with. Because like I said, or as I was saying, um, they only have a core over here. So I'm not really too worried. They have cores in uh, Russia, obviously. So they will definitely probably be uh, amenable to actually attacking them. Having all these guys attack Russia, I think we could pretty much overcome them somewhat quickly. All right, so we just got infiltration, guys. And we also actually can construct level 5 forts everywhere, which of course we're going to go ahead and do as soon as we can find that decision. Uh, construct level 5 forts. This is definitely worthwhile. Look at that. All those forts. Ours. Ours. Actually, there's a lot of level 6 forts, too, um, because that little decision thing... Well, let's just say it's not very intelligent because it upgrades to level 5 forts as well. Um, but our territory is very defensible. I think there's all level, th level 3 forts, I guess. Um, we have level 6 already. Our entire country, level 6, level 5s. Um, next, of course, military direction is we want that gas attack. It is the era of world wars. And we need to make sure that we understand that. Okay, so we now have the ability to construct stormtroopers. Um, I just started building all these infantry units, so now I'm going to have to get rid of all of them. But stormtroopers are fantastic, so we're, of course we're going to go for it. Of course. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's the death of Queen Victoria. So, the day was one of glorious sunshine. Queen Victoria, whose 63-year reign was the longest in British history, came to an end at her estate, Osborne House. On the Isle of Whitton, 1901, Victoria was 81 years old and had served as Britain's queen for almost 64 years at her passing. She was surrounded by her children and grandchildren, including her son, who would succeed her as King Edward VII and her grandson, German Kaiser Wilhelm II. Glory to the Kaiser! <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, this event keeps popping up. Oh, I want. Anyways, why is the U.S. trying to get access to us? They are at war with Mexico. Why are you at war with Mexico, U.S.? Mexican rest. What? Mexico. What is Mexico doing? What? <laughs> Mexico's going for all of Central America. This jingoism. Oh my gosh, they're stronger than the U.S. Why is the U.S. so weak? They're not mobilizing. Because the U.K. is on their side. They're winning. Battles plus 25. Oh. That's a war to watch. Okay. Well, good, good for them. Um... Okay, so something I actually wanted to mention for you guys is, uh, let me give, give it a second. I'm building all these units at the same time. I think we have a little bit to go, um, but I'm changing up the army stacks a little bit. There was something I learned recently in between last episode and this episode. And, oh, what is Russia doing here? Russia, you are being mean. Very mean, Russia. You don't like it when people are being mean. Uh, yeah, they are tampering with our sphere. Um, anyways, over here, we have Hussars. So Hussars, when it comes to reconnaissance, 100% recon efficiency does not mean, or does not mean your uh, total, it's a modifier, okay? So you need at least a certain amount of recon efficiency for an entire army. Now, the recon efficiency maxes out as a plus 50% increase to the highest um, recon unit in your entire army. So before we were using Dragoons, so there's two reconnaissance. So there's a 50% increase, meaning we had a reconnaissance total of three we were sieging down provinces. So it helped us siege faster. Now, I wasn't using Hussars. Hussars have a reconnaissance level of three. It says 50% faster is gonna be 4.5. Five. And so having 4.5 reconnaissance means that the occupations will go about that much quicker. Um, and I mistakenly thought that the total is fine. Regardless, Dragoons are still very strong. We only need one Hussar per army. The other 
other horsemen or cavalry could be dragoons. That's totally fine. Um, but you need at least one of your high recon units as possible in the army. In later dates, it's going to be airplanes. Airplanes have reconnaissance of four, which helps increase your occupation speed that much quicker. Anyways, that's what I was going about. Um, and what we're going to do is redo some of these stacks. So five stormtroopers, six artillery right here, um, one hussar and three dragoons per army stack so 45,000 units total um this way we have because i noticed when we were fighting those rebels earlier in sicily i looked at the back line the back line because we had put four armies there it was like four um engineers and like only two artillery pieces in the back line so the engineers apparently have preference over your artillery when it comes to the positioning on the battlefield and so i'm removing um engineers entirely engineers are only useful because they have a siege value that siege value helps them when it comes to sieging provinces of the fort because the forts what they do is that they increase the occupation time for a province obviously engineers with their siege basically they reduce by a certain percentage i can't remember what the percentage is um how long it take or how effective the fort is that's what the siege modifier does um i don't particularly care for it and if it's going to affect my battles i would rather just remove it and just deal with the slightly higher amount of time it takes to siege a province because that doesn't matter as much to me as winning battles so i'm going to remove engineers completely from my army stacks i don't want them anymore uh, i'm going to send these guys up north if we can, I would like to completely redo our armies, which would be very intensive. All these army stacks I would like to redo now that we have access to stormtroopers um, and all the like. Mostly because we can actually increase this a little bit and we are basically breaking even. We can support a very expensive army, which is exactly what we're going to be doing. Okay, guys, so um, we're being called into a war with because Turkey is at war with Russia. Now, I want to get involved in this war. My armies aren't exactly, you know, put together yet, though, is the only issue. Um, now, what we can attempt to do is probably, we can not join it, and then justify a second war, or we can hop on the bandwagon here into this war, because obviously it's only Qajar Empire, and not these other empires, so it's... What happened here? And why, why is Scandinavia a thing? Well, that's, uh... That's an issue. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Um, okay. So... I mean, I guess that's fine. They can just be our... They're a great power as well. Um, okay, guys. So I decided, as I was redoing these armies, I realized there is no reason for us to be having Dragoons anymore. Dragoons have two reconnaissance, which is kind of what we wanted because we have... We have to, like, siege quicker, right? But we have airplanes now. Dragoons have 9 attack and 11 defense. While stormtroopers have 16 attack and 17 defense and a maneuver plus 2 and discipline. I mean, they're a little bit slower, but... Dragoons are basically obsolete now. There is no reason for us to be having um, Dragoons in our army now. So I'm going to go ahead and actually delete all of these. And we are probably going to look into seeing what kind of restructuring we should do at this point. Because... I think these dragoons will actually harm us more than they will actually help us. And we have, what, six artillery versus five infantry. I think I want to go ahead and change that to eight stormtroopers total per army and get rid of these dragoons. Okay, so we just got armor, meaning I think that is actually a better replacement because we didn't really want... Um, the Dragoons anyways, we want to replace them with armor instead. And armor, I don't think it's going to be that great. I mean, 16 def attack, 8 defense. Currently, our stormtroopers are better. But 
the the armor definitely gets an upgrade. Uh, I think actually almost right away tank exploits gives us an extra siege, attack, defense, to the point where they're actually decent. And of course later on they get even more um, bonuses. We're gonna go ahead and do that. And yeah. <laughs> okay, so our first um, tanks are being built and they look funky. Was this an actual tank design? Cause uh, that looks weird. That definitely looks weird. So we got the Arab Revolt. Um, that's not happening. Sorry, it's all ours. Look at all that. So we just got this. The stormtroopers are actually better than tanks for sure, but tanks do have a siege modifier, which does kind of make up for it. They're not bad. All right, guys, so here is a plant of mine. So we're going to take mass politics as a research goal. I want to take this, the Duchy of Lorraine and Eastern Low Countries. Now, I don't know. I think this is basically going to have us take this area, if I am reading that correctly, which would be kind of fun. Uh, we go to war against France to do that. Um we also have a free place in a sunk spell we got against France. It expires less than a year. Um, and I would like to take that. But we're going to try this first. And we'll get mass politics by June 1905, which will be after the fact. Um, but in order to get that, we need to get all of our cores. And currently, uh, Britain does have our cores. So, here's what I'm thinking. They have only have 51... Uh, naval ships or whatever. We have a lot more than that. We have a lot of cruisers and we have um, our first fleet down here with a lot of... And there's apparently an army on here doing something. I'm not sure what, but they are going back to Africa. That's where they're going. And then we're going to send them over to the north and we're going to blockade all of Britain. All right, guys, so it looks like we have two events that just popped up because we did just discover mass politics, so good for us. Um, the Lujonono Purchase, which is apparently in East Africa. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Looks like it's going to require us to try to make a deal with the British. Okay, did that do anything? Let's see. Did France already have this? <laughs> I don't remember seeing this. Um, anyways, so... I don't know where this is. Let me see if I can look it up. So, Lujo... Yeah, there we go. Lujo No No is over here. So, we just got this. Okay, that is fine. The next one's the Eastern Macedonian Question, which... Didn't do anything either. Okay, well, <laughs> I thought something would happen, but apparently not. Um, we are, we just got mass balls, so we can take, go ahead and take this decision as soon as we get all of our cores, um, which requires us to take he our Heligoland um, from the United Kingdom. Now, the UK isn't very strong, so I think it's gonna be fine. I have my army stationed over here. I or produce some more transports. We're going to do an invasion of the Isles. Um, they have 22 out of 30 army tech, and we have a decent amount too. I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, and grab army NCO trading. We're probably not going to have it before the war is over. But we should have enough ships to be able to blockade their island. I am worried because it's 53 ships versus our 180. But of course, most of this is just transports, and their naval tech is much higher. Uh, but we're going to get this war started shortly. All right, guys, we are going for, I'm loading up the troops. We have 112 brigades we are going to use to invade um, all of England. I'm debating whether we should invade probably through here first. We could expand down, hopefully, over towards London. Um, most of their troops, I imagine, are probably going to be in Africa or India. Um, or maybe over here in the Americas. Um, I don't imagine they're going to have a ton of troops out here. 
There are the Irish over here that I might need to be worried about, but we can go ahead and try just blockading the channel there and it should be fine. Um, but otherwise, I say let's get this war started. Uh, we're gonna call in... I don't think we really need our allies. I think we're gonna be fine. So uh, let's call them in. Well, not call anybody in. We're not calling anybody in. Okay, anyways. Um, you will send two each. And something like this should be fine. We only need like five war score anyways to get um, our war goal. It looks like Brazil joined in and apparently all their satellites, which are quite numerous. Um, they do have troops down here in Africa. I'm not too worried about this. Why just defend it? Um, because five war score really is not that much. They are heading towards the Straits of Dover down here. So Bulgaria is going to offer us an alliance. I will take it. That's fine by me. Okay, so I'm not sure. I was going to speed run this, but this was such a quick war. That. Yeah, anyways. Um. I forgot we have gas attack. They don't. And so when we fought these battles, the British troops just got crushed. We already have 25 war score within like a few weeks, maybe. Like maybe like, I don't know. Short time. Anyways, we can go ahead and take our war goal. Um I I actually can we take more? Do we want more? Is the question. I don't think so. Um like maybe over here, North Somalia land. And maybe like Zanzibar or something. Um, dismantle Nation. We're not going to do that. I mean, we could, but we're not going to. Um, we can go ahead and place in the sun for North Somaliland. There's only four war scores. 5.5 infamy, though, which I'm not super excited about. We're going to go ahead and do it anyways. And they, they won't accept, actually. They will not accept. I think we're capped out on war score. But let's go ahead and just invade um, London. We will go ahead and occupy it and see where that gets us as far as war score goes. It should be pretty quick. I'll leave you and you there while you guys can kind of actually. Let's go ahead and attack this army. Yeah, minus four attack or for digging. It's not going to accept it. We'll just take London then. Um, what else can we blockade? If anything. Yeah, their, their army's just folding beneath us. Hence why I'm not that worried. Let's go ahead and reinforce down here. Defender blockades. Attacker blockades, point thirty-seven. Are they? No, they're not. We could actually call in Scandinavia. They will accept. Might as well. As long as... Uh... Okay, good. I don't want to accidentally turn into a great war if Brazil was uh, somehow a great power. So, Battle of Hull's been won. Uh, we could take him out here. Yeah. Uh, just one Canterbury. I'm going to go ahead and actually reinforce over here in London. Um... Let's get the army out of the way because I want to go ahead and occupy London so we get this war over with. Okay, well, they'll accept now. They'll accept. So we're going to go ahead and take it. Might as well. And there we go. Keep everything we've gained. And I am happy. North Somalia is ours. We don't have to worry about any British troops um, being over there on the borders. So send all these guys back home. And we will go ahead and actually activate that decision um, that we have waiting for us. Quantum theory, I'll take it. Exist existentialism. Uh, yeah, send you back to like Oldenburg or something. And claim Dutch. So I'm going to send them all over here to the west. Um, wait for the month to go over so they can all recover pretty quickly. And I'm assuming this is going to be a fairly quick war as well. 
if that's what ends up happening. I'll wait for the month, the year, to go over. And there we go. Okay, so. Claim the Duchy of Lorraine and Eastern Lowlands. So gain 7 Infamy, which we're at right below 18. So we'll be able to get it right before or below 25. Um, gain a core on Luxembourg. Relation with France goes up. Wait. Is it the... We go to war against France. That's what's happening. We go to war against France. Who has 148 brigades. And are allied with who? Anybody should be concerning with? No. Nobody to be concerned with. So I'm going to go ahead and send all of, our, all of our troops over here to the west. And we'll see how that goes. Alright guys, here it goes. So we're going to go ahead and declare war now. It's been a few months. I was waiting for armies to recover. And France is 13 infamy. Really? They lose infamy if I declare this event. Okay, well, I am curious how this is going to go. So the Duchy of Lorraine, the Low Countries, were originally part of the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation. Let's reclaim these territories and restore rightful German rule over them. That's 20 infamy, not 7. Okay. <laughs> 20 infamy? Uh, that's not what I signed up for. Um, anyways, I should actually go... I'm thinking about taking um, the decision to increase conscription time. I'm not sure why I was doing that before, because this actually increases our mobilization limit by a lot. Um, no draft. Hide naval for upgrades. That's fine. Okay. Oh. Never pose a threat to us again. Holy crap. Wait, what is my war goal here? Cut France down to size. Okay, we are going to kill the French, apparently. Um, a demanding peace with France. Okay, so we're declaring France, Belgium, and part of Netherlands. Um, I like this. <laughs> I won't lie, I do like this. So, I'm going to wait for the day to tick over. Um, everyone refused, probably because we're at, like, way above the infamy. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're all joining in, so France is going to be at war with basically our puppets, which is just Yugoslavia, which Yugoslavia does have like 56 brigades, so that works for me. Um, and it looks like the Dutch are going to be joining in, so that's fine. Let's see. What should we do? Um, obviously, march towards Paris. And see what damage we can go ahead and cause here. How about send you to there? Something like that. And for you guys up here, um, march towards Brussels. And since we don't actually have to worry about the... Um, Dutch doll, that should be fine for us. We can go ahead and blockade them over here. They have 52 ships, not too much. And it's probably all just transports because their capital ship's mount is only 8.8. .8. And France is zero. So, yeah, not much at all. We have 152 brigades. A lot less than what we have. And most of them are probably in like Africa or something. So, yeah, let's get this war started.
so Russia declared war on us. And we will fight them off. Um, <laughs> oh, I did not expect that. Okay. And they're probably going to try to be... Yeah, they're tiny us. Um, I will go to mobilize. Because we can. And as far as recruitment goes... Yeah, we'll go ahead and take them off of here and send them over to, like, Zarov or something. Um, just try to get as many of them deployed as possible. I'm going to go ahead and retreat down there as well and kind of fight them off as I can. I don't think this war with the French will last too much longer, but we are going to go ahead and mobilize and prepare for that. <laughs> All right, cool. So, now we have enough war score to go ahead and actually peace out the French, which we are going to do. I'm going to save it really quick because it does say on the the decision that they need to be disarmed. Now, cutting down the size, I'm pretty sure it accomplishes the exact same thing. But just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and actually do that. Uh, so, I have to worry about it too much. But we will go ahead and get the peace offer going. Uh, yeah, so peace out the French. Cut them down to size, and okay, so yeah, it does work. Um, and send our troops out to the east. Um, I don't think the war with the the Russians is gonna last too long. In fact, I think this army I feel to actually take them out completely. Um, so in that case, I might prepare more for a uh, a battalion offensive against us, more so than anybody else. And maybe up here as well. Uh, because that's kind of how it's going to end up churning out. And maybe even Scandinavia. Since we are over the infamy limit. Um, I will send some over here. But I don't think the war with the Russians is going to last very long at all. Um, you can just actually just go hunt down some, some Russians over here. Because you stop 5.6 wars. Of course, now we're over 10. They won't peace out just yet, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be peacing out very soon. Because there's no way they're going to win this. There's just absolutely no way. And another battle won. Wipe out some more. 15 war score. They will peace out. There we go. Oh, wait. We don't want to peace out the Russians, do we? We don't want to peace out the Russians. What we want to do is liberate... Poland. But I don't know if Poland is an option here. I think we have to go for whatever the constituent states they are. So Congress Poland's actually 74 war score. It's really Congress Poland. Which is unfortunate. We are going to go ahead and do that. Um, I just sent a peace offer, so I'm going to reload our save really quick. And we're going to go ahead and just kill the Russians. <laughs> And see what we can do from there. Alright, so I did go ahead and reload the save really quick. Um, because we are going to be go fighting the French or the Russians. Um, but, of course, we need to go ahead and get this treaty signed against the French. So, demanding peace with France. So, let's go ahead and take this. So, thoroughly defeating France, we must see to it that they never pose that to us again. Of course, of course. It's only uh, proper. So, Belgium apparently no longer exists. And these two countries are satellite nations. Uh, we took a bunch of land from France. It's oh, just, just Lorraine. Um, I kind of like this. I like this. It actually frees Brittany too as a satellite. Okay, that's weird. Okay, so we have Brittany as a satellite nation over here in France. 
Um, this actually might pave the way for us taking a lot more from France than we originally were going to go to and go and do. Um, the Dutch are also in a position where... Can we make them a puppet? No. We can't make them a puppet. But I would like to take out this land as well, considering the fact that they are all over here. Um, I like this. I like this. All right, guys, so we have our peace offer. Um, I decided to change my mind. We are not going to go straight for Congress Poland. We're going to go ahead and actually dismantle the Russian Empire entirely and just fear the territories that we need to form that client kingdom of ours. Um, so let's dismantle Russia. 
Um, rename Lorraine and the Rhineland. It's because it's probably uh, a hold off from that war. Um, construct level 4 and naval base. I don't really need to do that. I'll wait till level 5. So rename Nancy area and of course the Rhineland. We will do that. And that's some fun stuff. We can create a state in Dongola if we wish to do so. I'm actually going to hold off on that. Not too... It's not necessary. And also increases colonial migration, which we'll go ahead and go and do. And we can have some German pops head down over that direction. Um, as far as these people go, I'm going to first demobilize. Turns out it wasn't really necessary. Um, I wasn't sure how long we we're going to have to occupy things, but we got the war score pretty quickly. So I wasn't really too concerned about that. Um, I'm going to send troops maybe to Italia. Um, I think we will need troops down here at least at some point eventually. Let's say there's our pops that have... I think we lost quite a few men somehow. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what resulted or what caused that, but we do have less troops. Which is unfortunate, but yeah. All right, here you go. So we got the breakup of the Russian Empire. You can see over here. Oh, no. Okay, so... Um, Okay, so the Russian Empire has been forced to concede defeat in its war, and now treaty talks have, been to, have begun uh, to discuss the break of other empires. An enemy of the Russian Empire placed at the tables assured. At the very least, any German lands currently or Shepard Session should be returned. We should push our lands back. Okay, cool. So the Treaty of Moskva. We have lost the war like vultures. The victors have descended upon us. Blah, 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 blah. Great. Um, the war is... Oh, what the crap just happened? We annexed all of that? That's not even cores, is it? I mean, we have Eastern German. Huh. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is great. Okay. So, long live the German Confederation. We'll go ahead and get uh, remove total war. And are these guys in our sphere? No, they are not. We can go ahead and make them in our sphere pretty quickly here. And they're going to be a priority for us. Um, everybody else I'm actually going to go ahead and deprioritize. So, like Portugal, Spain, um, for example, all of these countries, not too worried about. And also, we'll go ahead and focus on these guys, which hopefully should go up pretty quickly. They all don't particularly like us, uh, but I think it's fine. We can go ahead and rename Latvia, um, Lithuania, Reconquer Estonia. So we've established, we finally established control for Estonia. We must prevent them from leaving the United Baltic States ever again. Uh, okay, cool for them. Um, and of course, create the Baltic States. Um, so we release that area. That's a puppet, I assume. Yes, I'm actually fine with this. Um, I didn't really want to directly control the area, anyways. So this actually should help us. So we can keep that in our sphere. Those guys stay in our sphere. Oh, we have Crimea, apparently. Which has Eastern German pops. How many Eastern German pops are there? Not too many. Uh, incorporate. What does this do? Uh, the Baltic province should be incorporated more closely into the German Confederacy so that we may be at our secure our eastern border, being able to prepare the route for annexation. Okay, well, we don't really annex them. Well, I guess we could. Maybe. Later. <laughs> okay. Um, we're gonna kind of chill here for a little bit and see what happens. I do like this. I do definitely like this. Okay, so Poland is now in our sphere. Great. Um, all we need is Belarus and I think maybe parts of Ukraine. And we should be able to get Zaposlavia. <laughs> this is exciting. Okay, so Russia. Um, <laughs> Satmi was freed. Kazakhstan was freed. The Siberian Republic was freed. Yakusha, Kamchatka. Russia got completely derped, didn't it? The Siberian Republic are allied with us. Kamchatka is actually in our sphere of influence. In fact, all these guys are basically um, almost in our sphere. That is something else. 
They're not too populated at all, but... Man, that is... That is something. Uh, they're friendly with us, too. I kind of want all these guys in my sphere. I don't know if that's too much to ask for, but I want them. <laughs> uh, Tajikistan. I don't think these guys are at all. Yeah, that's fine. Kajar Empire has all this area. Is that like that before? It must have been. They're Russian in Russian sphere. Transfer other colonies. What kind of colonies would Russia even have? None, right? Once we're talking about... No. I mean, I'll... Say yes. I don't think I'm actually get anything though. <clears throat> Take what we can. Sure. <laughs> uh, looks like Turkey got all this stuff back. Russia sells some weird provinces down here, but look, at Turkey's kind of buffed again, which increases our influence. And somehow Spain's in Russia's sphere. That's weird. All right, guys. So I just barely got all these guys into my sphere. Which, honestly, looks pretty nice, I would say. Um, we have a large buffer region over the east, and it makes me extremely comfortable. So I'm really happy we are able to do that. Um, we do have two decisions that came up. So, we can integrate Lithuania into the Baltic states. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. I don't think it's going to do us much of anything. Um, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, but we also form a Zappa to Slavia. Which, we gained five infamy. Um, we gained 20 prestige, and of course, all those... something happens. This happens. Okay. Um, looks a little funky. In fact, it looks extremely funky. <laughs> okay. Um, you have... I'm trying to think what we can do about this. If anything. Uh, I'm going to actually do this really quick. But, um... We have a border issue. <laughs> uh, we could release Hungary, potentially. That leaves this open, which we could just release, like, with Thania or something. Um... I'm going to wait until we get the whole we stand triumphant thing and get our infamy down. I'll release a few countries, make the border issue a little bit better. Um, that's kind of how things currently look. All right, guys. So it looks like we're actually going to be... So this crisis fired over here in um, Bulgaria for... Um, Fire Bulgaria and Southern Macedonia. So they want to take this area for Greece. And I'm like, okay, well, great. Because that would fix kind of the border gore really going on down there. Um, and everybody joined in on the UK side, obviously. And they won't peace out. Even though my military score is twice as large as theirs, they are being quite um, obstinate. So we're going to be going to war here in just a matter of a few days. And it's five, four, three, two. Yep, they are not piecing out. This is going to battle. So it's not going to be too difficult of a war. I'll go ahead and call in. Oh, so wait, Great Wars are not enabled. Interesting. Okay, I did not know Great Wars were not enabled. Um. That's fine. But let's just go ahead and wipe out the Italians as quick as possible.
<laughs> okay. So you guys probably saw that I got a lot of peace offers coming through. But I there's this battle. And I trapped... Apparently one and a half million British troops. In Exeter. And I did lose about 200,000 of my men. But they lost a million, one and a half million people over here. 266.7 war score. I gained 6.5 prestige from that. Um, but anyways, I just had to play that out. That was 500 of their brigades. And so 92 brigades left in their army. <laughs> oh, that was great. Um, I'm debating whether or not to even add a war goal here. Um, British are pretty much done for. I mean, I just wiped out their entire army. Um, we could go ahead and add some stuff over here in France, perhaps. Like, we can take maybe Champagne. Um, perhaps French um, Comte. How much did that cost? Go for champagne. It's 12 war score. I'm actually gonna go for it. Um we also want French Comte. That's only six war score. We can go for Picardy. Which is 12 war score. And there is <clears throat> our toy. Um for eight war score, we have 87 left. Um, Normandy, how much is Normandy? 17, of course, we can't take that. Um, yeah, I'm kind of satisfied with that. We could take something from the Italians, like Lombardia, for example. Uh, if I can. Oh, their capital's here. Of course it is. We had 90 war score. That's not going to happen. Um, I think that's it then. I'm actually fine with just having that. Let's want to like, maybe have Greece uh, take Eastern Macedonia. Yeah, Eastern Macedonia. So free allied cores, Eastern Macedonia. That's like two war score. Can't. Okay, well, I'm actually fine with this. Um, or we could take, like, maybe Algiers. Is that their state? Yeah, that's a state of theirs. Um, French. Algiers only four war score. How about Iran? French. It's only two war score. They won't accept. We're going to get taken war score like crazy now. Um, let's go ahead and take South Somaliland is from them as well. Which should be right here. It's only one. We can take Niger. I think we'll call it quits there. <laughs> I didn't really intend to do this, but whatever. Might as well. We kind of have the war score to do it anyways. So, why not? What's going on over here? So, we'll keep those two stacks there. We'll just kind of siege down the rest of Britain. But that was something. That was something. Okay, so they will accept. Um, we're going to go ahead and do that then. 99 war score. Let's do it. Okay, we look kind of ugly. <laughs> um, what is this? The This thing. Gain two infamy, United Baltic Provinces. Uh, population size. Something happens over here. Time has come to incorporate the Baltics as imperial state of the German Empire. Uh, His Highness Adolf Friedrich the First, Duke of Mecklenburg, Schwerin, and the United Baltic Duchy has requested from the Reichstag and the Duke Kaiser the recognition of his Baltic domains as constituent state of the German Empire. 
Okay. So we just annexed it. Again. But it increased the population over there, I'm pretty sure. Uh, this. In our military successes against the Russians in the east, many more eastern lands are now under our rule. Um, while the local German nobility could be left in charge of Estonia and Latvia, the Thunia will require a much more direct method of control. Over Ost supreme command of all German forces in the east will be assigned to the region of both to both pacify and native population and supply some with German ideals and culture. Uh, sure. Um, African farms and mines. The only other thing I could see over here. That's cool. Um, I kind of want this back now. <laughs> um, I don't know how I could annex them. Is that a thing? We could suspend political rights if we wanted to. In this case, pass the reform to... For this, perhaps? I'm actually kind of in favor of that. To your draft. Um, diplomatic annexation options. That's kind of what I want. Uh, return plans are directly ours. Um, yeah. Begin diplomatic annexation of... I don't know who that would even apply to. I want to get rid of the German Confederate or the Zaposlavia. And ideally just annex them entirely, but I don't know how likely that is um, to happen. Open vassal interaction. Oh, I know what that is. Okay, anyways. I think we're good. Everybody, go home. <laughs> uh, is there a way? Can we march across the channel? No, we can't. We need our vessels there. That's annoying. Because there's no way we're going to be able to get march everybody across the, the ships. There's not that many. Okay, who just kicked uh, Belarus out of our sphere? Apparently, add sphere. Great. I'll take it. That's a lot of rebels. Okay. Luckily, our armies are marching back, but uh, that is not a good uh, a good thing to walk into. And um, we'll see if we get our armies all ready to attack some rebels. Uh, or we can pass some reforms. But what reforms have we not passed? A lot, apparently. Okay. Um, 40%. We have to wait until 20th of October, which I'm sure we'll be able to do it. But it's a lot of rebels to take care of. But our... It looks like our satellite nation is actually taking care of it a little bit. That's good for us. Okay, guys. So what I'm going to do is actually release the United Baltic Provinces because... I know we have cores here, but I don't really want it. I don't want to directly control the area. Um, I mean, it does actually help our navy. Maybe I will. Just for the ports, because there's like one, two, well, there's three ports over here. And each port gives us, what, 320? That's about a thousand supplies. I probably won't be doing that. We are building up our navy a little bit. It's been a few years. I'm just kind of going through the remainder of the game. I want to try fixing our borders. It's just kind of bad <laughs> right now. Maybe we can actually make Belarus and uh, Ukraine satellite nations. Um, or keep them on our spheres. Also fine. I do want to keep expanding into France a little bit and try fixing this border. It's, it's atrocious. And maybe taking out um, the Dutch. We are um having some issues as far as being able to justify because there are i think we have the no more war penalty right now but you can see like negative thirty-three thousand days so that's not going to happen anytime soon and right now i'm not going to take any of these states because i kind of want to see how many um um cultures we can get as far as like south german in these areas and as long as they're not states they'll get colonial migration and we can see if that kind of changes things all right guys so i don't know what happened but the save file appears to be corrupted. Uh, this is my fourth time loading it from this autosave. 
but by about between March or May, it consistently crashes. And I don't know what to do anymore. So this save is pretty much done. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to correct this border gore issue, which is not fun. Um, I'm going to go ahead and release. I mean, I've been fighting over some of my spheres with uh, Russia. Unfortunately, they've been actually kicked me out. Not too worried about actually losing them at all. Um, but that's what's happened. But I've been building up my navy a bit. So over here you can see I have a very large navy. We've got dreadnoughts, we've got battleships, cruisers, steamer transports. Uh, more dreadnoughts, battleships, cruisers, submarines. Same thing over here, dreadnoughts, cruisers. So our navy is pretty big. We've got 13, 28 capital ships. And we're well ahead of any of the other um, world powers. 5,000 industry, over 3,000 prestige. We're doing pretty good here. Um... It's just unfortunate that this save broke. Um, what I'm going to do is fix this really quick because we can go ahead and release some countries. I was going to wait until our infamy popped back out to normal. Um, but clearly that is not happening anymore. So I'm going to release the United Baltic Provinces uh, first. They can... Looks like I lost all my cores here as well. Interesting. That's fine though. Um, we're going to go ahead and release... What's over here? I actually give it back to Romania. I give my provinces here back to Romania. Let's try that. So if I were to, for example, um, open vassal interactions, re... Oh wait, next country, next country, next country. We're going for uh, Mr. Romania, wherever you are. <laughs> Why did it not pop up? Okay. Can we not give cores back to them? Free or return cores? I... Okay, that's interesting. Um, we are going to go ahead and just give it to somebody else then. So these are going to go to Bukovina. I'll release them. Way up here. So, two provinces. That's fine. They have six units. Good for them. 156,000 pops. They could actually uh, form Romania. <laughs> Even though Romania actually exists already. Um, let's go ahead and release... I guess just Hungary? That would give all this to Hungary. We could actually split up between a lot more smaller. So we could like Kingdom of uh, Scotland, for example. We could release Transylvania. be kind of cool. Let's do that. Uh, let's do Kingdom of Skeltzerland. Two provinces right here. They are all Hungarian. And then we'll go ahead and release Transylvania. Right here. Beautiful. They have 2.55 million pops. And they are South German. As accepted. That's kind of cool. Um, and let's go ahead and release Hungary at this point as well. So release nations. I think I actually might force them to give them back um, some of our cores down there, which I don't part. I'm not particularly fond of, but yeah, because we'll lose like quite a few Germans, 250,000 Germans. Uh, so let's go ahead and release Hungary. Which is right here. Did they get that province? They did. That's unfortunate. But they have 3.18 million pops. They're Hungarians. And the borders definitely look better that way. I don't like this still. But there's not really anything we could do. Um, I wanted to do this. Create the Duchy of Lorraine. Which required... Nanzig? Wait, what is this? Do they have to be... German. And we have that global flag, don't we? Not sure why we can't do that. Because Nanzig is where? Right here. And it has to be South or North German culture. Which they are not. That's very interesting. I'm not sure how you can really do that. 
unless you like conquer them at the beginning of the game. But this weird thing, which is right here. Oh, it has to have at least one of those cultures there. That makes more sense. Okay, so you have to just kind of wait, which you're not going to be able to do. But it's been a fun game. I mean, I'll go ahead and play it for a little bit so you guys can see. I'm going to go ahead and uh, state these areas. I was kind of waiting for the pops to turn into South Germans, but that's fine. We can go ahead and take them over anyways. Lots of states, actually. Look over here into our civilization. You see, all these are states. I wanted to take Turkish Libya, but we... Okay, actually, we can justify now. That was weird. I go ahead and attempt to do one. Acquire state late, but I'm pretty sure it's going to crash still. And I'll play until that point. And then we'll go ahead. Actually, I'm going to have it saved monthly. So I don't lose the progress here. And I'll just reload and quit at that point if it does crash. Airplane. Education. So we made it to February. March. And then it crashes. Yep. Yep. Alright, so we're back into the March. So, I mean, I think it does look a little bit better as far as our borders go. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, sphere map mode, great. I'd like to have gotten Scandinavia and Ukraine and Turkey all in my sphere. Um, even Spain, it has kind of expanded that. What looks really nice. Siberia, Kazakhstan. Um, all those states are pretty close. I think Ukraine's over at 50.8. Siberia is over here. Huh. So unfortunate. So, I'm going to go ahead and end this save. We'll resign and see how we did. So, 10,693 points. That actually lowered between when we loaded up the save. So, I'm thinking that's a little bit less than what it was actually. Uh, population 58.9. Or maybe actually it's the same because we did release a bunch of countries. Um, adventures are 30, so let's go look at the ledger. Um, military score highest is me, of course. We got uh, Japan is second, uh, about a third of ours. The UK is about a fourth of us, 700. And then we got the Chinese powers, the other great powers over there. As far as our industry goes, we're almost twice as much um, of the US. Japan's the third, we got the UK after that. Prestige, of course, we are very high, extremely high. And we're three times the next great power's total score. So it looks like Japan is actually higher than the U.S. Good for them. It's not showing up over there, but it is. Uh, we have the second most pops with 235.6. I'm sure if you added our spheres as well, or like our spheres and satellites, we might actually be a lot closer to them. Uh, we have the most provinces, uh, most factories, not the highest literacy, unfortunately. We're like... Whatever this is, 88%. Even Hawaii. Hawaii is independent. That's kind of cool. Um, leadership does not matter. Brigades, we have 438 versus Japan at 314. Ships, 347 versus Yugoslavia, which is our satellite at 84. So, satellites are actually doing pretty well. Um, I don't even know if there was any, any like fascist governments or even... So there was a proletarian dictatorship in Tienstin. Um, constitutional monarchies, autocratic dictatorships, absolute monarchies. I don't see any fascist governments. Uh, political reforms, social reforms, country population. What was the highest pop province in the game? Cairo and Vienna at 1.09 million. There we go. We were on the leaderboard. Oh, wait, this is us. <laughs> this isn't the world. Oh, that was us. Province, factory production. Uh, this is good. Fun. Nation ranking. We already looked at all that. So, I mean, it's been a fun game, guys. It's been a journey. This upload has taken me a month to complete, mostly because I've been doing other things and I've been kind of sidetracked. Um, but I did finally finish it. It's kind of, I don't know, it bugs me that the save broke like that. I wanted to have a big, massive, great war at the very end, just kind of a last hoorah. Um, 
sort of moment. But that's, of course, not happening. Um, we did have a few big wars, which is good at the middle of the video. So I'm glad we actually got to do a few things. But anyways, thank you guys all for watching. And I will see you guys next time on our next series. Bye. As always, please leave a like down below and consider subscribing if you would like to see more content just like this and more frequent uploads. If you have any suggestions, go ahead and leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys next time.